And welcome to another episode of the Atheist Experience. I'm your host, Russell Glasser, and with me today is Jeff D. looking marvelous. Hi, Russell. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll explain this later okay. after you finish your announcements. Uh, today is Sunday, July 8th. We are a live call in public access television show based in Austin, Texas, uh, dedicated to promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We are also available through live streaming video at ustream.tv. The official Atheist Experience website is www.atheist-community.org. Uh, Atheist-experience.com, my mistake. Uh, you can also provide feedback by commenting on the official show blog at freethoughtblogs.com slash AXP, or you can email us at tv at atheist-community.org. Uh, if you enjoy this show, you can check out our related podcasts, which you can find through the Google machine by looking up the nonprofits, P H E T, uh, or Godless Bitches. Um, as always, the cast and crew of the Atheist Experience will be going to dinner after the show at 6 p.m. at El Arroyo, 1624 West 5th Street in Austin, and visitors are welcome. Uh, all right, that's so it now, for the announcements. The Mohawk. So last <laughs> night I appeared on the uh, Trolling with Logic podcast. They did a 12-hour long marathon to raise money for our own local uh, atheists helping the homeless organization. Um, and uh, That's the URL down there if you're watching. And, uh, and uh, during my appearance in the, the last few minutes, we, we challenged people to throw more money at the cause uh, in, in exchange for which I would do this. Okay, so everybody take a good look. <laughs> and if you are just listening to the podcast, you really should look up the YouTube edition of this episode just so you can see Jeff's hair. <laughs> uh, are we gonna dive straight into callers today? I think that is the are plan. We, are we ready to? Yes. Awesome. I mean, I am. I don't know about you. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Matt in Oslo, Norway, making a return Ooh. from last week. Uh, hello? Hello. Okay, um... So, yeah, uh, so I, I heard your call last week, you know. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, I looked up, bit, uh, uh, I looked up mm -hmm? the Tasmanian Tiger. You don't want to talk about that a little more, do you? Uh, no, I'm done with that shit. Okay, because well, you, you did email us and said you, I mean, when I looked it up, it's a marsupial and it's a good example of convergent evolution, but you said in email that you don't think it proves creation anymore, right? I actually found out that the example was pretty bad for creation, so, okay. yeah. Okay, well, I appreciate your looking that up. Yeah, so I got a new thing to prove creationism. Okay, um, what's that? Okay, initially, um, I was going to talk about... Uh, the dinosaurs that exist, like, that was found now in the uh, last century, but m uh, Mr. Delante's boneheadedness and arrogancy, like, made me not want to do that. So instead I okay. chose Icatons, Wait, why which not? are... Excuse me? What does Matt being a bonehead have to do with not wanting to use this particular example? I'd like to hear about the dinosaur. Uh, but that, that's not what I'm here to talk about. Uh, I chose okay. Icatons instead. You know, I, I can talk about both, but that would require like an hour or something. I don't want to take. I can I can talk about it for a minute. 
You actually sent us a link to Wikipedia, which says that uh, there was a carcass which was found, which creationists claim to be a prehistoric plesiosaur, but then right there on the same link, it said that uh, several scientists insisted that it, uh, let's see, they uh, analyzed it and found out that it was the carcass of a basking shark, which had decayed a certain amount, and so looked yeah. like something other than a shark. Yeah. So that one didn't work. Next. Right. Can we please talk about ecosystems now, okay? Sure. First of all, um, if creationism is true, then uh, dinosaurs and humans should have coexisted, right? Do I agree on that? Not necessarily. Um, there it's are not old Earth creationists. Dinosaurs you mean, did exist, right? You mean, and, you, you mean if young Earth creationism, according to the Old Testament, it's true because there are yes. different varieties of of creationism and and well, you know, the one that Kent Hovind go, goes by, if you know who that is, right? Oh, right. Yes, he's the guy who's in jail for that, tax. That evasion. does narrow it down. Thank you. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Yes, yeah, so about that. Um. We must agree on that, though, until I can move on. That. Yes, uh, I, I I think we would agree that according to Kent Hovind's interpretation, uh, the humans and dinosaurs would have coexisted. You realize, of course that if by some freakish coincidence, uh, you know, dinosaurs from, from uh, many millions of years ago had, uh, uh, even one species had survived long enough to coexist with humans, you know, that could happen outside the bounds of creationism too. So just show, even if, which I don't think you can do, but even if you could show uh, evidence of humans and dinosaurs coexisting, that would not prove creationism. Well, it's at least better than no evidence, you know? Not really. Uh, no, I don't give them I mean, that, right? Okay, it would be a start. Than go ahead, go ahead. What's, right. your, what's your evidence of this? Okay, um, so in Peru, there was like 15,000 stones found with um, etchings and carvings of dinosaurs apparently coexisting with humans and also showing very advanced medical technology. And um, yeah, and these, the first reported sighting of these stones was in 1535 by Father Simon. Hmm? Reported by who? Father Simon. Who's that? He was a Spanish priest and a uh, Jesuit missionary from Spain, okay? And uh, he's the one who saw the first one, okay? I don't now, know that that's true because I'm looking at the Wikipedia page for this one, which is oh, this Wikipedia, is the man, come on. that you're talking about, right? Yeah, I'm also reading stuff. Okay, because according to this, this was popularized by Eric von Daniken, and there was an yeah. interview that he did with the farmers who claimed to have found these stones, and they actually admitted to forging them. Yeah, some are fake. Uh, some are okay. fake, yes, yeah, but not every one of them and I can also how do you prove know that. yeah how do you know that not they're not all fake if we know in <sighs> fact that some were how do you know that some weren't because there's a layer of patina on the surface of many of the carvings indicating that the images are several hundred years old at least have these Especially things been analyzed in and area, demonstrated to be several desert. hundred years old I mean isn't this the kind of thing that science is kind of good at yeah if you will so have they but Hmm? Have they been analyzed that way? Yes, they have been dated by many people. You know, everyone's interested in this stuff. They have. The they have been analyzed and dated, because is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. because everyone is. Because I'm not in this. seeing that. Do you have like a reference for that, like a peer-reviewed paper or something? Yeah, but I'm reading this off a site. What What's the site? Just curious. Why does that matter? Well, I mean, I because if relevant. you were reading it off of, like, a science journal site, that, that would lend some credibility to it. Why does if you're reading it off of, journal? like, creationscience.org or something like that, then I would not be inclined to believe it, because creationists lie a lot. Yeah. Well... Why do you need to know where it's from? It doesn't matter. There's many sources of information on the internet. No, like no, 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 <laughs> no. You do not get to call the show and, and make a claim and then back that claim by the further claim that there are many sources that support you without providing any of those sources. Yeah, because okay, believe it or that's not, just, you, you, just, 
I could say there are many sources that tell me anything, right? That doesn't prove a thing. Yeah, I get what you're saying, man. Okay. Um, creationwiki.org slash ecostones. Okay. So it's not just a creation site, it's a wiki that anybody could type anything into. Yes, I know a second ago like you were poo-pooing yeah. Wikipedia for the same reason, <laughs> weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we're done. All right. Thanks for what? calling. <laughs> uh, Corey in Schenectady, New York. Hello. Hi, Corey. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. Uh, first things first, this is to Jeff D. I Hi. don't care about your opinion, nor do I respect it. So oh, if you could okay. Just be then uh, thanks for calling. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> We're being way too efficient today. I think this is going to be a problem. <laughs> if you don't care about our opinion, then why are you calling the show? Jacob, also in Oslo. Hello. Hi. Hey, do you hear me? Hey, do you know this other guy, Matt, by any chance? Yeah, he's my brother. Oh. <laughs> do you have something? Are you in the room with Matt right now? No. What? We're, we live in different apartments. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we just finished talking to him. Okay. Do you have other stuff that's going to support your guys' point of view? Yes. I'm going to prove to you that the Bible knew the Earth was round before science knew about it, and therefore it was divinely inspired, and therefore God exists. Uh. Um, you, you realize the roundness of the Earth was established by very primitive measurements. There was just some, some mathematics to go with those measurements to establish that, 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 the, that the Earth was round. This was like, I don't know the exact age. The roughly the Greeks knew about it. There. So um, just even if it's true, even if you could establish beyond a shadow of the doubt that the roundness of the earth was clearly indicated in the Bible, that would not prove that that knowledge came from a god, would it? Well, if they knew about it in Greece, uh, it doesn't mean they would know about it like in Middle East where the no, Bible no, was. Uh, no, but if they, could have figure, if they figured it out in Greece without a god, then they could have figured it out in the Middle East without a god. Yeah, and the way they figured it out in Greece is that they watched ships, and they noticed that if you uh, watch a ship disappearing over the horizon, no matter which direction it's going, uh, the top disappears last because there's always curvature downward. So they not only figured out that the Earth was round, they actually worked out a rough calculation of about how big it was, way, way before satellites were needed to establish right. that. So uh, go ahead and read us your Bible verse with the understanding that even if you have a Bible verse that clearly states on no uncertain terms that the Earth is a sphere, that doesn't prove a thing. Go ahead. You want me to read the Bible thing? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> well, you Go know, for it. <laughs> we'll give you a shot. Okay, I'll do it. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay, it says uh, in Isaiah 40, 21 to 10, 22, Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. Uh, so it's a circle. So why would he say the circle of the Earth if it, was, if it was thought to be flat at that time? Because if you're on a flat surface and you go to a high point and you look all around, you see roughly the same distance in all directions, and that puts you in the middle of a circle. That's why. Hey, Jacob, what Not do you think Not a sphere, of you understand. Not a sphere, it's a circle. Yeah. What do you Which think of uh, Matthew 4, 8? I'm just wondering. What does that say? Uh, it says the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and ah, showed him one. all yeah. the kingdoms uh, of the world. That's talking about uh, like the poles, like north, west, south, and east. Okay. Did they see like stuff in China from there, from that mountain? Well, Jesus was omnipotent, so I guess he could. The, it was so the why devil did they bother omnipotent? to climb up the mountain? Was the devil <laughs> omnipotent? This passage says the devil showed this stuff to Jesus. 
Yeah, and Jesus saw all the kingdoms of the earth or whatever. So the devil is omnipotent and can show Jesus things around the curvature of the earth. Interesting. Well, you'd think if you had like a big domain in hell, you'd be at least somewhat powerful. And where? And where okay. is? No, c good grief. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, that was that was cute, but you know, your 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 passage about the about the earth does not say it's a sphere. It says it's round. And while roundness is a characteristic of a, of a sphere, it's also something that primitive people would easily leap to that conclusion just by you know, looking in all directions and noticing the horizon seems to be the same distance away in all directions. And of course, there's the ancient Greeks who figured this out for themselves. They so figured out that it was actually so a sphere. Even if it had been a sphere, it wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have jumped to the conclusion that it was by magic that they figured this out. You got anything okay. else? Yeah, you're going to help. Okay. <laughs> All righty. And then the chat room is waiting for you to blow up, Jeff. You're not going to give them the satisfaction, are you? <laughs> um. Uh, all right, we've burned through all our Christian callers in 16 <laughs> minutes. I, I kind of feel bad about that, uh, but not really. Uh, Danny in Chicago. They're welcome to call back if they got anything else. Yeah. Hello? The, the, guy, the guy in Schenectady is welcome to call back if he apologizes. Hello? Uh, hi, Danny. Hi. Um, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know how some movies will create their own religions for the story and stuff? Yeah. Why are some of them, like, why do some of them get a lot of flack from Christians and other religions when others don't, you know? Is there like a specific reason? Uh, could you ask? That's a good question. I mean, uh, if you, if, from the perspective of Christians, wouldn't all non-Christian religions have to be made up? I mean, well, not just yeah. the ones explicitly made up for like books and movies, but all other religions would be made up, right? And they don't like those either. So maybe it's just because it's the same sort of thing. Yeah, I suppose, but it seems like some movies where they make up um, religion, they don't even get as mad about it, like um, Star Wars. And other ones, like um, The Golden Compass, they really get pissed off about it. I mean, I know Well, The Golden the Compass more. explicitly uh, was saying yeah. stuff about uh, something that looked an awful lot like Christianity. Yeah, yeah I know. By, a, by an author who was explicitly an atheist uh, saying, uh, expressing his views. So that's that's different, right? As far okay. as I know, George Lucas was not taking a swipe at Christianity when he when he invented uh, his the the Star Wars religion. Although you know, a lot of Christians will jump to claim credit by by mining a story for metaphors and then saying, "Ah, see, that's really just Christianity in another guise." I mean, and oh, there are oh. science fiction movies that explicitly invoke some kind of metaphor like that, uh, or you know, fantasy stories like uh, the Narnia books uh, yeah. and and Orson Scott Card's books that actually like come up with some kind of retelling of the Book of Mormon. Um, okay, um, just, it just seems like, uh, even some movies where they make, uh, like, um, uh, Christian, um, the bad guy, like, um, 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 the one by, uh, Darwin's, um, like, ancestor came out, like, oh, three yeah. years ago. Oh, um, help me out here, uh, uh, Ch Matthew Chapman did that did that thing with Liv Tyler that was explicitly an atheist movie with a love triangle with a Christian. But I mean, that, that's a pretty unusual case because, you know, that's a guy who's kind of on our team specifically making a movie. Uh, okay. Um, that's all I wanted to ask. Okay. Hey, I'm going to give you a page that, you can, that you're going to spend hours on. Uh, it's on tvtropes.org. Uh, and and uh, when you get there, search for no such thing as space Jesus. <laughs> uh, okay. You know, there, I think your question is common enough that there's a, that there's a page dedicated to it with a whole giant list of examples, um, which starts with the quote from Star Trek V: "What does God need with a starship?" <laughs> um, oh wait, wait, one last thing. Um, I was listening to the old nonprofit, and you guys were talking about the Hell House. Did you guys ever actually go back there? Um, in like the 
uh, in like uh, dresses and stuff, like you were talking about. I think ever, various of various of us have been there several times on various Halloweens. I think I blogged it a few times. If you search the Atheist Experience blog for Hell House. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. It is kind of interesting, you know, what he what he brings up. Well, why on earth would these folks who believe that they are uh, following the one true correct God get so bent out of shape by made up uh, by explicitly made up gods in fiction and movies and stuff? They're they're concerned about uh, their youth being corrupted by worldliness. You think so? Yeah. It, I mean, maybe, I, maybe we've got Christians watching the show who would call in and comment on that. What's wrong with, oh, you know, the, the mythology stuff in uh, Lord of the Rings or in Star Wars or any of those things? Why, why is any of that a problem? If yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I listen to uh, Way to the Master, which is the program that's associated with Ray Comfort, yeah. not hosted by him. But that guy is always complaining about, uh, about worldly stuff. And, you know, in a similar vein, Christians are always warning parents about sending their kids to college because they're afraid that when kids are uh, exposed to the wider world, they're going to lose their faith, but which actually they, turns out to be they, true. Why are they worried about, be, be about their kids being exposed to stuff that is explicitly made up, right? That nobody is claiming this is actually true. It's just fiction for fun. Why is that a problem? As for a science that's what fiction I'm, that's fan, you want to know that curious. that like really deep concepts are sometimes explored in science fiction in a way that they couldn't be without coming up with those metaphors. And that's the thing. The, maybe those things give people a way of exploring those concepts without doing it through the lens of Christianity. I don't know and that so that's they really might the not thing. Not come out the, with the. Well, that's an interesting idea. But, you know, I mean, they're very careful about controlling information, and uh, I, that's just one of many ways. All righty. Hmm. Um, let, let's space it out a little bit. I'm uh. going <laughs> to go to uh, uh, Anna in Hampton, Virginia. Anna? Anna. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to get your guys' opinion on the recent news with Valerie Hodges from Louisiana where she no longer supports the voucher program for religious schools uh, because it's not quite a Muslim school. Uh-huh. Yeah, that um, bit him in the ass, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you would think. I just, I don't understand wh how they could have gotten that far and passed that law without thinking at all about the ramifications of it. It's just astonishing to me the lack of of um, of uh, c you know consideration of the um, of the obvious consequences of their own actions. They they must think that Christianity occupies a special status, and then they have to use all these tricks to make the religious money go to the religious schools, not realizing that. Uh, that this is protecting individual sects of Christianity and, and Christianity in itself as much as it's protecting atheism. I mean, uh, you know, as an atheist, I don't want my kid having to, winding up going to uh, a school that, that preaches Jesus bullshit. I don't want him going to a school that, that preaches Islam either. Uh, and the more religions you get, the less likely it is that... Uh, you know, it's your money is going to be going to the one you like. And I'll bet you don't need your kid going to a school that's going to explicitly teach him atheism either. Nope. Because you are a parent and can handle that at home. Yeah, and just like they say on Way of the Master, <laughs> just by being exposed to the rest of the world and not kept in a little bubble, he's, he's going to tend toward atheism anyway. Um, she says that... Uh she thought it would be limited to the founder's religion, as if, you know... Why did she think that? <laughs> Why on earth did she think that? If they said to limit... Yet. If they did wanted to limit stuff religion, to their own the religion, they would have said so. What was that? Maybe she thinks the only real religion is the Christian one. Well, I'm sure that's what she thinks, but she's apparently not even aware enough uh, that other religions are practiced in this country to, for it to have ever crossed her mind 
that if they pl pass a blanket law uh, channeling government funds to religious schools, that those are going to include some religious schools that aren't her religion. It's crazy. You think it's, it's more about it's her being anti-Muslim rather than just any other religion besides Christianity? Say again? You think it might be more about her uh, bigotry towards the Islamic faith rather than just it be not well, being I'm sure she'd just, freak out just as much if it were a Wiccan school. Yeah, I'm, not, I, I'm having trouble even getting past the fact that they passed that law in the first place without, ever, without it ever having occurred to them that this could be the consequence. You know, people demonize She's atheists surprised. for fighting Why is she surprised laws? that that's what their own damn law means? Pe people don't realize, uh, I mean, you know, people demonize atheists for fighting these laws without realizing that we're doing it for them, too. That they really, you know, that we're trying to help them see that this is not going to be the, uh, you know, the great thing that you think it is, and we're saving you from yourselves. So there you go. All right. All right, thank you, guys. All right. Thanks for calling. See you on Facebook, right? Yeah, see you. Bye. <laughs> Um, Emmanuel in Madison, Wisconsin. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. How are you guys doing? Fine. All right. Awesome. Uh, I guess I wanted to begin by saying um, I appreciate your show. I appreciate you, uh, you know, flexing your intellectual ability and, and trying to think things out. I think uh, people who come on and are belligerent are really representing the Christian faith really well. So I want to pause that for that uh, right off the bat. Okay. All right. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about is sort of the really premise of atheism, uh, the rejection of the positive claim of a deity or really anything supernatural, so to speak, um, because of the lack of uh, meeting a burden of proof, if you will. Is that correct? That's pretty yeah. close. That's, that's okay. well said, actually. Well, actually, um, I mean, you can you sort of state yourself, and then we can go from there. No, I, I'm... Well, what the, we're, we're happy with the way you said it. Go ahead. Okay, awesome. All right, so I think, again, that's a, that's a great way to put it, and I know it, it, it allows you to say, oh, we're going to push the burden of proof on you to prove this, you know, this guy exists. Oh, no, 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 think, no. no. Wait, yeah. where, wait, wait. What is this? What, no, not who's pushing? Wrong. Okay, sorry. No, I agree. I agree that the burden of proof is on the person making the positive claim. Okay. I agree. That is a, that is a fact. That's, that's a fact. The, the, re the thing that we sort of get into it, cloudy sort of, uh, I guess, double talk is when you then take that and then you, you say you believe in, say, a natural universe, a universe that has natural origins. Again, so is that something I, I'll ask you, you two can answer. Do you believe that the universe had natural origins? Well, I mean, uh, we all agree that the universe exists. Uh, okay. And we agree that natural processes exist. Uh, okay. And so in the absence of some other thing besides natural processes, uh, the, best, uh, the best estimate we can make is that the things that we've actually observed are, have a causal relation. That doesn't mean that we've completely excluded the possibility of a god having created it. It just means that uh, in the absence of evidence for what actually did the causing, you either say you don't know, or you fall back on the stuff that you do know. Uh, well, see, that's no. the thing, is that, is that we don't know anything about the origin of the universe. No, it's not so true that we don't know anything. We know, uh, you know, we know back to the Planck time, for instance. Would you agree with that? But, well, so, I, 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 see, this is the thing, is that what do we, what do we know? See, when you talk about what we know back to the Planck time, I, I understand what scientists have told you. They believe about the Planck time based on the observations <laughs> that they have made during this current time, but again, though that's not something that you can say definitively, and that's something scientists would never say definitively. It, but it's, but so it is you, something, hold on, but it is something mm -hmm. based, as you say, on observations, which, no which, which gives it a leg up over anything that is based on revelation or dreams or ancient holy texts. It just does. It may not be perfect, but it automatically wins over stuff like that. Wait, wait, wait. So how? So you say observations. So you you, you make an observation such that you know there's background radiation. The universe is expanding. Therefore, right. it started from a single, you know, point. So you make an observation like that. You then you you make a conclusion based on that observation. How is that different 
from the, I guess, general observation of everyone in, you know, in each, every period of time where a religious text has come from, you know, thousands of years ago that has said God said this. It, it, it's an observation. There's a text here. Right. That's that's a, that's something we have. We have the But I mean, we d we don't believe text, we right? don't There's believe that the Big Bang is accurate because we read it in books. I mean, we what we're observing is not th people who say that the Big Bang exists. We're we're observing actual physical artifacts, not just people saying stuff. No, I, I think I think I'm not, I'm not talking about, I'm not, I, not talking about the claims made in the book. I, yeah, I'm Emmanuel. Talking about, I'm talking I, about the yes, you not artifacts. Actual, I just realized. So that we have a book, yes. right? So say we didn't have a book. No, and, and hang on, hang on, Emmanuel, I get that, you, you know, I get you. You're saying those people that wrote those books observed that stuff, right? I'm not even saying that. No? I'm not even going as far as there. No, okay. I'm, say, I'm right. simply saying the actual book. The fact that we have a book yeah. that says, that, and multiple books that say that God, yeah. you know, or some supernatural entity yeah. right, gave them that. So that, that is an observation that would, I guess, um, well, that, that there, the yes, there, exist. that is an observation. Fine, no, we have no an observation. It, 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 you don't even have to touch the, the, the manual. Content, correct. We have an observation that there are numerous whole, holy books that uh, were that were that uh, that are associated with various uh, religions. Yes, yeah. we have that observation. There are such books. Now, okay. what do we conclude from that? I, I, it, it sounds to me like you're thinking it might be reasonable to conclude that because there are a bunch of holy books, that therefore there must be to, something to the beliefs uh, associated with those books. No, no I'm saying, I'm saying the so, same, in the same way that you observe background radiation, right? And you make conclusions based on that observation. Well, what, I'm asking you what con exists, I'm right? asking you what conclusion are you suggesting oh, ought, might I'm, be, I'm be reasonably I'm drawn from the that, existence okay. of holy books? That, are you done? Sorry, let me let, let yeah, you I'm, I, let me finish. Let me finish phrasing my question. Mm -hmm. I'm asking yeah, you sorry. what conclusion do you think might reasonably be drawn from the observation that there are a bunch of different ancient holy books? There are a bunch of conclusions that can be drawn, right? Such as one of the one of the viable. It's not. It's not inviable, right? It's not ridiculous to assume or to make a conclusion that you know what there possibly was supernatural or that there's some some event or something that actually gave these people these revelations that they wrote down and that it got passed. That's not. That's not an unreasonable conclusion. Uh, no, it is unreasonable. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, can we respond to these one by one? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, you, I thought you had a response. Well, I have a no, response I, to that. No, I one. do, because, I mean, he was saying from the existence of these books, it's not an unreasonable conclusion that the stuff that's written in them is true. And there, there's no way to jump to that conclusion. I mean, we have Aesop's fables also. You know, and, and they're very right. old, and they don't explicitly say uh, this is actually a work of fiction. By the way, uh, somebody stumbling across this book might actually believe in a talking fox who found a bunch of grapes. But the fact that we observe the book to exist doesn't justify concluding anything specific about the accuracy of the book. And the fact that we can that we can see not just Aesop's fables, but vast numbers of different collections of, uh, of fairy tales that were uh, put together from a lot of different cultures, from people throughout history, right? The existence of all those does not lend any more credence to the idea that there were, that there were ta actually talking animals or uh, that any of the uh, events described in those stories actually happened. And you know, just take a step sideways from there and we're in, we're, now we're talking about religion instead of things explicitly admitted uh, uh, to be fairy tales. P we know that people uh, write things down that ain't so. We know that people have uh, hallucinations. We know that, that people um, uh, you know, do all, there, there's all kinds of behaviors that explain the existence of inaccurate ancient writings. That there's no particular reason to leap to the conclusion that, that books describing ev events which cannot be duplicated now are describing, in fact, accurate, uh, giving accurate descriptions of events that happened in the past. Why would we? I mean, you you can make again. That's a conclusion that's reasonable. But again, we also have texts from 
into time that we believe mm -hmm. to be true, but really well, no. we, some we people believe to be true, right? <laughs> and the texts that we believe that are true, that are not to be true, are based on the presence of things that, that we don't believe could happen. You understand? So the way your, your, your textual criticism that you're using for, for ancient documents is based on your claim that these events do not exist. So if you no, find, no, it's not. If you find no, it's a, not. a book about no. a Nero, hey. you know, an emperor, hey. if you found it in a, in a oh, can I, so that's nice. If we found it in a cave and we found something about Nero, right? And, and, and this was the first time we found it. And we're reading through it and everything in there is completely, you know, natural. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing weird about it. Um, then we assume that that's true. You know, it's from that time period. Um, that's when Nero lived. This book is true. If there's anything in that book what? that says, you know what? How do you no, get to the, Nero. hey, hey, how do you oh, get good? to the, how do you get to the assertion this book is true? At no point did we, did we make an actual logical connection there. It's yeah, just, are you we found this book and this book is true. It's like, you know, dot, dot, dot. Oh, that is what history is. Did you, you, I mean, you do understand, we have, we have, we, we, we collect. Yeah, but, uh, but, but Emmanuel? From history, do you not believe that history is true? I mean, what, what do you believe from your history Yes, book? but you when just, you, you just. You reject I, the positive Emmanuel, where, where, where I think we're responding to a very specific point. The way you describe this is there is a book about Nero found in a cave and everything in that's described in it is naturalistic. Therefore, we assume that it is true, and that's not true either. Yeah, that's not just how because something works. is described in naturalistic terms does not make it true. If something uh, is, if something can be verified by other sources, right, or 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 found to be true by recreating the conditions and seeing that why in fact that is the way things happen, then we believe that it's true. Well, okay, you're, so you're overblowing the significance okay. of naturalism for us. I, to I, us, I, I naturalism is a conclusion. It's not, a, it's not an assumption. It's a conclusion based on the evidence. Okay. So, I mean, I want you to, we will go back to the history point. What you're saying is, if we found a book about Nero today that has some extra information that we did not know about him in history, Mm -hmm. We would, because we have no reference point for that, mm -hmm. we would immediately say that that's not true, even if it's if from the that, time period. No, no, we wouldn't say no. that it was true, and we wouldn't say that it wasn't true. Until we, co until we were able to corroborate it with other sources, then we would put it as an extremely dubious uh, uh, possible bit of information. Uh, things, that, things that come from single sources, I mean, the, w the way that science works uh, when you're talking about the scientific observations uh, is that it's possible on an ongoing basis to continue to observe things uh, that, that lead us to certain naturalistic conclusions. History is a lot fuzzier because there's no way to go back in time and be sure that a certain event happens. But nevertheless, historians are still scholars and they still treat things with as much scientific skepticism as, as they can, uh, which means that if you have the same kind of thing coming from multiple texts from people uh, uh, in various places in the world, that's considered to be more credible but it could still be overturned with contradictory information. And that's how come, in general, we believe uh, that we have sufficient uh, information to demonstrate that, for instance, Julius Caesar existed. But we don't have sufficient information to believe the claims that were going around in Roman mythology that Julius Caesar was a god in human form. Okay, okay, that's, that's good. We're, we're, we're good now. So, so history, again, you agree, it's very difficult Right, because it's an event that, it is. that occurred in the past. It is you can't difficult. recreate history, right? It's, it's not something that's recreatable. And it's also so, why people aren't really sure that Socrates existed or King Arthur existed, even though there are a lot of stories about it uh, with a lot of wild stuff going on. Okay, that's, that's good. All right, so the origin of the universe, is that mm -hmm. history or is that, like, that's sort of physics. Day -day that is what. That's physics. physics, and that's. I was. I thought I should probably needed to step in when you said history. You, you can. We cannot recreate it. That's not entirely true. When you're making a claim about, say, the way that some physical object interacted with another <laughs> physical object, 
you can recreate the conditions and test it. That's what, that's what, that what testing is. You recreate the conditions under which some event was, uh, 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 was said to have occurred, and you right. see if you can replicate it. I agree, if you know those conditions. Okay. That's the thing. So we are, we're speculating. So we're looking back. And I, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing the scientific method. You have to. This is what you do. This is what scientists do. Mm -hmm. This is what they're paid to do, is to look back and speculate on possible conditions for the early universe. And These then, are conditions that we actually cannot recreate. You, that's, you that's speculate, the and the, then, and then, what you do is you, from your speculations, you, you uh, figure out what are the implications of this, I, this idea I'm speculating about. What would I expect to find if my speculation is accurate? And if you look and you find multiple lines of evidence that fit your speculations, that's evidence that your speculation happened to be accurate. Okay, uh, agreed, but then again within limitations, because you made your speculation knowing a lot of this evidence, right? So, so say, um, you know, um, but, like the, most theories, the Big Bang, like most theories, we don't move away from them until we find something, right, that, that you know, tells us, okay, this theory can't be true, we need to come up with something else that better explains all of the evidence. Uh -huh. by, by the way, to be fair, I just remembered that we have in the audience a physicist who doesn't think that the Big Bang is the best explanation for the origin of the universe. And oh, I know he's going to oh, give me hell for this if I don't, uh, later, if I don't bring it up. But he thinks that there, that there is another uh, physical explanation that fits the facts better than the Big Bang, but I'm not sure how popular that theory is right now. But but whatever it is, it is it does not it does not invoke the influence of any um, of any supernatural forces, the existence of which cannot they, uh, cannot themselves be established. Uh, agreed. But then again, we're talking about something which, which we have. Very little knowledge of period. I would, if, if, if wait, where are you family, getting this from? How much we know about the wait, universe? Wait, where, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Um, we have the uh, knowledge of all of the things that ha all the observations that have been made uh, over centuries of science. Where, where, where is this this blanket statement that we don't know hardly anything about that coming from? Okay, okay, then let's, 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 um, let's estimate, again, we're just, we're just spitballing here. How much do we know about the universe? I guess we're just spitballing. We know what we know. 23. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on what okay, scale? Okay. I don't know, I, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like, the point is, how much, like, because we know we don't know a lot. I think we, we can cut to the that. chase. I, I, let, me, let me try to cut to the chase so we can wrap sure. up this call and move on. Are you suggesting that because we do not know the limits of our knowledge, all kinds of other things might be true, and we just don't know about them yet. Uh, that, isn't that, is, that, is that unreasonable? Is that an unreasonable? Um, I conclusion? think that's true, but, but I would further say that when we do not know what we do not know, that is not grounds for sticking in supernatural stuff. I it agree. doesn't. Yeah, okay. Then what do we have to talk about? Thing, we right. will know when we know. If we do not know now, then we then we do not know now. And and you know, uh, using ignorance to justify belief in various supernatural things is of uh, is foolish. Okay. I mean, I understand. Okay. So we do not know now. We do not know the way the origins of the universe. What what occurred? We know very little about our universe in general. To say, to no, make no, I'm not, no, I'm not buying really that. Not, I'm I mean, not buying we don't we know do very know much about the universe about the in general. Huh? Do you, I mean, are you going to, were you trying to interject? Yes. I'm not buying your claim that we do not know very much about the universe in general. Okay, okay, okay. So, so you're saying that we. The, the, the kind we of stuff we know, Emmanuel, 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 the kind of stuff that we do know tends to be the broad strokes and. It's, you know, those broad strokes establish bounds. Like, we know pretty much for certain that hardly any stars in our galaxy are made of cream cheese, right? <laughs> we know some very broad, <laughs> general things like that. And, uh, and, and those, the n things we do know, those, those broad uh, observations, set some pretty severe limits on what else we might ever find out. 
We are not ever going to find out that star systems are made out of cream cheese. It ain't going to happen. Okay, dark matter, dark matter, again, is a fairly recent concept, and it's said to, to be responsible for 82% of the matter in the universe. We just, we just made that observation okay. that this thing, that this substance must exist. And therefore what? Continue. Where are you going with this? I'm going, again, I'm, just, I'm simply stating that you can't look at what you know now, again, and then say, because really we know very little, and the mere fact of really the okay. fact is we know so little relative to our universe that it is almost 100% that any observation or statement that you make about um, the entire universe as a whole right now is false. Because really? Why? So, 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 so star systems are made out of cream right? cheese. No, mm -hmm. dude, that's, that, that's, that's not, that is, I, I'm not buying it. That, that, that because, that, be, that because there's stuff we don't know, therefore it's a bottomless pit and anything could be true, including invisible spooks that created it. No, come on. The time to believe a thing. Of course anything could be true. Now you're, you're not. Really? It could be true that star systems are made out of cream cheese? No, no, I mean... In, in, so in, not in, everything in, could be true, right? Not in, everything. There's stuff not that, there's stuff that violates I'm, I'm, broad I'm general saying, knowledge I'm we have that can't be true. Qualified. Huh? There's stuff I, that I, violates broad general knowledge we do have that cannot be true. I agree. Okay. I agree. Uh, no, I think where you're going with this ultimately is a great big roundabout way of getting to the, uh, getting to the uh, argument from ignorance not, not and, so much. and, uh, and, and the God of the gaps, and the God of the gaps, Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. We've heard this a, a million times before, the God of the gaps. Here, no, let me no. let you're you're trying to you're trying to establish that there's this vast amount of stuff we don't know and stick God in there and we're not buying it. The That's time to believe that there's do. a God say, is I when mean, there's positive right now. Emmanuel. All what it is. Emmanuel. Um, Emmanuel. The time to believe um, that there's a God is when there is positive evidence that it exists and not before. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, all right. So you uh, you're willing to to make claims and accept claims as an atheist that have that have not been proven again that meant a very small like what? very little evidence like what? So to, speak, to be able to, to describe them there it entirely such claims as that have not naturalistic origin in the universe that is something that no one can speculate Emmanuel, on. Emmanuel what claims what got cl you're you're accusing us of believing claims that have not been proved and I'm asking like what like a natural origin of the universe that is a claim we know that here now here's what we believe about the origin of the universe and russell already went over this i don't know why we're back on this right territory at the beginning, right yeah um that we know that natural forces exist we know mm -hmm. that we do not know that supernatural forces exist and if you want us to waste time if you want scientists to waste time looking for supernatural forces that could have caused the universe you are flapping your gums for no reason. They're not going to do it because they're not into wasting their time. When it is shown that there are supernatural forces at all, then we can start looking for supernatural origins for the universe, maybe. Not okay, before. Awesome. Uh, okay, uh, uh, awesome, awesome. I think, I think now, what Thanks for calling. <laughs> man. <laughs> that was, I didn't want to stop you, man. Okay, it was, uh, the whole show. It was beautiful. Uh, we do have, uh, let's see, 10 minutes, so I'm just going to remind people who are local that uh, not to come, but uh, we are going to happen to be at uh, <laughs> El Arroyo on 5th Street, so um, uh, that's where we're going to be eating dinner at around 6. Of knowledge they can do with as they will. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Although we may not know it, it may just be um, speculative. Uh -huh. uh, Dan in Hilton, New York. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Hey, I had the pleasure of debating the presuppositional apologist, Cy Ten Brubenkate. Did you post this on here. Reddit by any chance? Yes, it's on YouTube. I have read it, yes. Yeah, actually, if you Google Rochester Atheist Examiner, you'll, you'll bring up the video of the, of the debate. And anyway, he, he share, stole your stuff, stuff right? I'm not going to step on you. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to share with you the, the what I call the rhetorical sleight of hand that uh, the presuppositionalist uses uh, whenever they encounter an atheist. 
it's, it's kind of interesting. One of the main questions they'll ask is, can you be wrong about everything that you claim to know? And that's that actually a trick. Yeah, it's a trick question because the definition of the word no, which is a reasonable definition that presuppositionalists will use, is a justified true belief. But it turns out those the very ground of our uh, understanding, what I call necessary truths or axioms, are not knowledge claims in that they're not externally justified. So if you say, yes, I could be wrong about everything that I claim to know, the presuppositionalist will then attack you for not being able to know anything at all. It's right, really but they'll the also difference. say, like Ray, like Ray Comfort once said, you know, well, you can't claim to know everything, but I can. And right. I'll just say, no, right. you can't. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, exactly. bringing, a, bringing a God into the argument doesn't actually solve the problem that they're trying to solve. It just, uh, it just creates another thing that they claim to know that they don't know. Right, right. Well, they, they actually put themselves in a trap because mm -hmm. they will claim to know for certain, uh, certain things about this God, for example, omnipotence, for example. So uh, what they're claiming to have external justification for the very thing that they're presupposing. So they undermine their own argument when they do that. And very few atheists seem to recognize that when, when they encounter these presuppositionalists. But it's... it's it's really, like I said, rhetorical sleight of hand that uh, they try to confuse people with and, and bring in their God when it's not justified. Dan, do you read the uh, Atheist Experience blog by any chance? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, um, because I just got challenged to a inter-blog debate with a presuppositionalist, and I've been listening to a lot of stuff. Like, there was a couple episodes of the Reasonable Doubts podcast. Uh, mm -hmm. that were about presuppositional apologetics. And one of the things they pointed out was that uh, what presuppositionalists think deep down is that you don't need to logically persuade atheists uh, of, of God. You just need to get them to feel uncomfortable enough and express enough doubt that God will jump into their hearts. <laughs> right. Uh, that's really what they yeah. think, apparently. Yes, yeah, I, I agree with you. That's that's exactly what they explicitly say, is that uh, it's not really a choice, but that God will come in when you're ready uh, for him to come into your heart. Type of thing. So it doesn't make much sense. Right. Um, did Psy 10 Bregg and Kate, like, rip off your stuff and sell it, uh, or is the, was that somebody else? No, that was, uh, I, I had heard about that uh, happening to somebody else, but we had an agreement up front that we could both videotape the, oh, okay. uh, the debate and do with it whatever we want. In fact, you know, I, during the debate, I, I called presuppositionalism a gift from God, as it were, uh, to atheists because it, it actually undermines uh, Christianity. So I, I want Psy to be as popular as possible because what he's doing is painting himself into a corner and he has no escape because he has to trash the evidential arguments in order to promote his presuppositionalism. And as soon as you undermine presuppositionalism, he's stranded with nowhere to go. So when I say it's a gift from God, by the way, I'm just using God as a metaphor for, for, for reality. So it's, I'm not talking about an actual uh, sure. existent entity. But. So if he calls, would you recommend taking the call? Because he strikes me as kind of a dishonest scumbag that I'd be wasting my time on. Um, you know, as long as you understand, you know, some of the tricks, that he has up his sleeve, the, the no question. Uh, if he asks you, for example, what's, uh, what truth is to you, and most people will use truth as that which corresponds to reality. Another trick that they'll use is they'll ask, who's reality? But in fact, what we do is create models of reality. Right. That, and then the evidence that best fits the model proves the model itself. And so they, they conflate actual reality with the model of reality. So that's another trick that they do. So as long as you understand those different tricks, then, you know, sure, take the call, do whatever you need to do to debate with them, and, um, and you shouldn't have any problem at all. Okay. All right, By thanks the way, for calling. I just what? wanted to oh. shout out, I, I, I emailed another presuppositionalist, Kerrigan Skelly. If anybody knows how to get in touch with him, I'd like to debate him, uh, or Eric Hovind, who's kind of taken up this whole presuppositionalist thing as well. So if there's any way 
that I can get in touch with these people or anybody interested in sponsoring the debate, I'd love to All right, engage what's, them as well. What's the group that people can contact you at? Uh, FUNY Group, which is F-U-N-Y Group dot org, O-R-G. Okay, thanks. Great, thank you. Bye. Um, you mentioned that, yes. uh, is this all presuppositionalists? Really, their motivation is just to make the atheist uncertain to the point where God can jump in? There's like a playbook somewhere. <laughs> um, are, are, are these the kinds of Christians who uh, would have to take the blasphemy challenge seriously? The blasphemy challenge the, is... The, the uh, oh. denying the Holy Spirit thing, right? Which is supposed to be the one unforgivable sin. I have no idea. Which would immunize you from God ever <laughs> jumping in. Then I'm wondering if they will even, if they will even talk to a person who has immunized themselves from having the Holy Spirit jump, jumping in by taking the blasphemy <laughs> challenge because that would render the entire exercise pointless. Uh, can't tell, but I mean, you know, I'm they might curious. reach people in the audience if there just is an curious. audience. Just, or <laughs> just curious about the implications. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got like a few more minutes, and uh, so Bobby in Los Angeles, you're not going to be able to be on for very long, but uh, what's on your mind? Hey guys, um, how are you? Fine. We're great. What's up? what's up? I don't know if you remember, I called you guys. Um, I've waited a long time to get this set up again, you guys, like Jeff and Russell, because uh -huh. I spoke with you before. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, and um, I don't remember. we spoke about a lot of things, but... Um, yeah, I'm still struggling with this, and um, okay. I'm just calling today to say that having faith is a good thing, and it's not in a bad what? thing. Yeah, having faith in what is a good thing? Well, a certain amount of faith is good, and... Um, well, how much faith is good? Should I have not faith that the stars are made of cream cheese? <laughs> no, definitely. Yeah, you know, the dictionary yeah, that's definition... That's why I didn't really want to call Bobby? in today, because a lot of the calls today was just too much... Um, especially the first two callers from Oslo, Norway, they just make what I want to say that much harder and makes me sound stupid. Um, and, you know, putting words in my mouth also makes me sound stupid. So please don't do that, you know. Um, okay. Another thing is... I got questions for you, though. But yeah. we only have a minute left. Oh. We'll have to pick you up after uh, yeah. on hold. Uh, but look, uh, uh, well, the, 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 the number one thing is this, Bobby, the, the Higgs particle that was discovered. If people, if scientists didn't have faith in that particle, it wouldn't be discovered. It wouldn't scientists have any motivation have people to search for things. Faith did and not, wait a minute. Having faith would actually, okay. um, in Bobby, a way, have you, Bobby, you know, you're search playing? for things, search you're, for answers, Bobby, search for meaning. Bobby, you stop him. Okay. Bobby, I'll pick you're you on up hold. afterwards. Uh, you're playing with the dictionary definition of faith, at which you alluded to yourself. The word faith can be used for anything from just kind of making the assumption that any random chair you sit down on is going to bear your weight because you've got such a wide range of experience with chairs that they tend to do that thing, all the way to believing in invisible spooks in the sky that created the universe. There are huge, vast differences in those, um, those kinds of faith, and some of them are reasonable in some cases and some ain't. Okay, that's our show. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Uh, if we didn't get to you, then uh, hang on and I guess we'll take you for a few minutes before we head for dinner at El Arroyo. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Russell. Bye, folks. Oh my gosh, we're getting applauded.